ఓం శ్రీ గురుభ్యో నమ శ్రీ గణేశాయ నమ ఆత్మస్వరూప ది ట్వంటీ నైన్ ప్లస్ బుద్ధి పూర్వ అబుద్ధి పూర్వకృతాపకర్మణాయమహో జ్ఞానం వేదాంతిండిమ so iti vedanta dindi maha das proclaims vedanta jnanam prayas chittam see in the karma kanda portion of the vedas and also in smrutis like manus smruti parashara smruti yajnavalkya smruti etc these are smruti texts which define the code of conduct of people in different stages of life like brahmachari grahastha a student a family person a retired person and a sanyasi so these are the four stages of life defined in the context of hindu culture and for each stage there are duties there are do's and don'ts it is indeed an elaborate list of thou shalt do this thou shalt not do this the list is really very big and then uh, there are always omissions and commissions in the lives of people what i have to do i miss doing and what i should not do i end up doing so this kind of both situations are there and uh, we are given a chance to atone for our omissions and commissions so this atonement karma you see the omission is with reference to a karma the commission is also with reference to the karma then uh, the atonement also will be in the form of karma only so that is how the prayas chitta kanda it is called in the karma shastra there is an entire section devoted to prayas chitta the atonement karmas so vidhi nishedha prayas chitta vidhi means thou shalt do this nishedha thou shalt not do this and prayas chitta atonement for commissions and omissions this prayas chitta if you first before committing a mistake or before uh, uh, skipping a mandate if you look at the prayas chitta you don't feel like uh, making any mistake because uh, instead of committing a mistake and then atone for it it is better to avoid the mistake itself because the atonement karmas are so painful so sometimes uh, when you look at this price chitta kanda uh, we wonder is it a meant to to frighten the guy so that he won't commit any mistake he will do all his duties for that purpose because when you look at the atonement it is more painful why do we avoid a karma because the karma is painful it demands a lot of energy and all that therefore we tend to avoid it and so let me avoid the karma and then i will atone for it suppose that is the attitude then uh, that attitude doesn't work because the atonement karmas are even more painful than the original karma it is better to do the original karma and be done with it anyway this price chitta kanda is there and uh, if you look at some of the price chittas uh, the heart sinks there is a, a price chitta called dwadasha varsha price chitta the person committed a crime some crime so uh, like adultery or whatever and then uh, he goes to a, a teacher or an acharya in the in the context of karma kanda and asks for a price chitta sir i have done this mistake please tell me what is the price chitta he says the price chitta you have to do for 12 years it continues for 12 years dwadasha varsha price chitta every day morning you have to wake up take bath in the cold water and then go around the village uh, so this that like that 
price chitta for 12 years. Suppose again, I miss this price chitta somewhere in between. After 7 years doing, I miss it. Then what? Again, price chitta for price chitta. So, very painful. Then uh, you have to, uh, suppose uh, some other price chitta, you have to keep fast for three days. Very painful. So this way, this price chitta kanda, it uh, just uh, makes people frightened out of their wits. Uh, and that is the context. Then uh, the price chitta, the atonement for what? For papa. Papa karmanam. Papa is a sinful action. Okay? Sinful or wrongful, whatever. Papa is papa. So, this uh, for sins committed. Now, the sins committed, they fall into two categories. Buddhi purva krata, abuddhi purva krata. Krata means committed. Committed knowingly, buddhi purva. I know that it is a crime and I commit it. And then uh, committed unknowingly, abuddhi purva krutanam. But price chitta is there for both. Suppose I am driving the car at a higher speed. Uh, the road is uh, very wide and it is a, uh, a three lane expressway. So my friend thought uh, it is 65. Normally these expressways have 65 limit. But uh, that was within the Chicago city limits. And therefore, within the city limits, it is not 65, it is 55 only. Though it is expressway, still it is 55. This 80, everywhere else it is 65, but within Chicago, it is 55. And he, this person missed that point. So he was driving at 65. And then the cop caught hold of him. And so he fined him. This man tried to argue with him. I did not know it. He said, yes, you did not know it, that's why you pay the fine for not knowing it. Less fine. Suppose somebody who knows it and committed the crime. Suppose second time he did it. That means he knows it and he is doing it. Therefore, now the fine will be doubled. So, fine is inevitable. So, buddhi purva or buddhi purva. Like that in our life also, we commit so many mistakes or even sins Knowingly or unknowingly? The unknowing sins, there is a list of them. Suppose in cooking food, so they, they use wood as the fuel. And while cooking the food on a wooden stove, they take this wood, dry wood, and put it into the fire. It is possible that inside the dry wood, some creature is sitting. We don't know. That's a these creatures, they live in all kinds of places. And so it, it found the dry wood is a very convenient home for itself. And it found a small, it borrowed a small place, space inside and is sitting there. With the fellow, the, the thing is sitting. And now you put it in the fire unknowingly. And so it gets killed. So, uh, therefore, it comes under a sin. But committed unwittingly. A buddhi porva krata. Suppose you look at the wood and still see that a small creature is sitting there, but out of laziness you throw it into the fire. Then it is buddhi purva krata. Therefore, even in a simple, very innocent family life, it is possible that the sins get accumulated. That is how it is described. There is some truth in it. So, now we have to atone for it. And the atonement for such a simple, uh, uh, simple mistakes is very simple. For example, whatever food you prepared, you share it with a guest. And uh, if the guest is not there, share it with bhuta, like crows, dog, street dog, I am telling. In India, we only have street dogs, no pet dogs, Mo mostly. Nowadays, uh, because of globalization, and this internet, etc., there is some petdogs.com. Therefore, people look into it and get inspired by it and start doing, keeping these dogs and all that. Otherwise, in India, they used to consider 
touching a dog is considered defiling. You get defiled by touching a dog. They used to consider like that. So, the dogs are out there on the street, street dogs, and they share food with it. But they don't allow it to come and sit inside. It has to stay in its place and give some food to it. So, this way by sharing food with the other living beings, and also sharing food with a guest, when the guest comes, all the abuddhi purva karta papa, that means all the crimes, are not crimes, sins committed unknowingly, they are all washed off. So it's a price chitta. But when it comes to buddhi purva krata papa, the price chitta is even more severe. So this way, the price chittas, they, by looking at the price chitta kanda, our heart sinks, I tell you. Very painful, even to read the kanda is very painful. So this is how the karma kanda, price chitta situation is there. Now come to jnanam. Jnanam, the, 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 the knowledge of the self, it offers the best solution to all the kinds of sins or wrong actions committed in life till now, knowingly or unknowingly. So a single price chitta for all sins committed in the earlier, uh, life, in the earlier part of this life and also in earlier lives. This is a, it is like a, we have in India one-time life tax for the vehicle. You see, if you purchase a vehicle, in India we people, uh, what kind of vehicle we purchase? Uh, for example, long back I purchased uh, what you call uh, a small vehicle, it is, I forgot the Dev also, hero, hero vehicle, and uh, it has a small uh, engine, and uh, it, it goes, uh, it's an automobile, true, it's a two-wheeler. It is called moped, that is what it is, moped, that means walking, it is almost like walking only, but <laughs> uh, it is a mo, mo means it must mean motor, so that kind of a thing it is, very pretty, very puny little vehicle purchase. Then uh, the socialist government, you know, the government says you have to pay tax, tax for what? For purchase, while purchasing you pay the sales tax? No, no, one more. No, while purchasing petrol we are paying uh, duty. No, not that. Some more tax. What tax? What are vehicle tax? Okay, how much per year? 100 rupees per year. But uh, you can pay a lifetime tax. How much? The life of the vehicle is 15, 15 years, normally. It won't survive all those years. But they put it like that. 15 years. So if you pay every year 100, so the total comes to 1500. So if you pay 1000 rupees now, for the lifetime, the vehicle tax is over. So this is a kind of server price chitta. So <laughs> a price chitta, so for the committed a crime of purchasing this vehicle, and therefore I pay a tax for it. So that kind of server price chitta is there. What is that server price chitta? The atonement for all the sins, small and big, committed in this life and in earlier lives. Sarva Prayash Chitta is Atma Jnanam. Prayash Chitta Maho Jnanam. Aho Jnanam. Aho means what a greatness it is. Because of this Jnanam is a Prayash Chitta. For all the crimes, in one stroke you have done the atonement. A similar verse you find in Gita, exactly similar. There he says, uh, um, <coughs> I don't remember, very, very simple verse. So, Sarvam Jnana Plave Naiva Vrujinam Santarishyasi. That is the second half. So, first half also will come. So, uh, Apiche Dasi. Sarve bhya pape bhya papa krutta maha sarvam jnana plave naiva vrujinam santarishyasi. So vrujinam is sin. How much sin? Suppose all the sins that are committed in this life and in the earlier lives, so knowingly and unknowingly, you accumulate all those sins, suppose. And that those sins are, suppose, in the liquid form. Then just imagine like that. Then uh, this accumulated liquid of sins 
of this life and earlier lives committed knowingly and unknowingly, how much it will be? It will be an ocean like. So, and you can cross this ocean of accumulated karmas in your life, sarvam, using the ship called self-knowledge, jnana plava. So, you may wonder, if a person has committed some simple normal mistakes or uh, wrongdoing, probably the jnana is the price chitta, but suppose the person has committed some of the worst crimes. Worst crimes money means what? Okay, let us do like this. In the entire world, let us take three champions of sins, sinners. Three champions. Three worst champions. I mean, the biggest sinners. Three of them. So, Papakrit, Papakrittara, Papakrittama, Sarvebhya, Papebhya. Among all the sinners, everybody in the world, everybody in life must have committed some sin or the other. So, more, more or less everybody has these uh, mistakes in life, you know. So, don't get off by the word sin. Sin, I am using it because the word Papa is used again and again, that's why I am using the word sin. So, it's a word and uh, it is an expression. Don't take it seriously. Therefore, there are, uh, you, everybody has some sin or the other in his life. Like Christ said, who never, who never committed any sin, they may throw the first stone at Mary Magdalene. That is what he said. Then all the fellows who assembled there to throw stones at her, they walked away. That means what? It is obvious. Therefore, so collect the, the worst sinners, three of them. Papakrita is the worst sinner. The champion, you see what they do um, in declaring the champion, they collect the champions from different parts and then bring them together and then pick up one final champion. Like that they do, you know. So similarly here also, you bring three of the guys. Maybe if you look into history, recent history, three worst sinners against crimes against humanity. If you take, uh, you can put Hitler, Pol Pot, and uh, that is Cambodia, and uh, from some other place, somebody. Put the three. Like that, the three. And uh, among these three, you pick up the champion. He is now world champion among sinners. He is called Papa Krutta Maha. Sarvebhya papebhya papakrutta maha. That is the description. The description exactly fits into what I said just now. The world champion of the sinners. Even he comes to this self-knowledge. Suppose he takes to the knowledge of the self and succeeds. You know, these people who are given to crime, that to very dangerous crime, if they, sh if they change their mind, if only, they, it is very tough to change it, but if they change, they will become some of the best devotees, I tell you. Because that enthusiasm, that eagerness they have in them, unfortunately, it went in the wrong direction. If somehow you can put it in the right direction, like Angulimala was put in the right direction by Buddha and he became one of the greatest saints of his time. So, such stories, many, many such stories are there. Leela Shuka, who has performed penance for a number of years and then who wrote the famous Sanskrit book called Sri Krishna Karnamurtam, he is the devotee of Krishna. He was a, a vagabond kind of person, sinner, committed all kinds of crimes in his life before he became a devotee. So, a, a lady by name Chintamani, so she uh, ch changed his mind. She brought that uh, transformation in him. And that's why in Sri Krishna Katnamurtam, he pays tributes to his preceptor. The lady called Chintamani, I am paying my tributes to her 
it is she who put me on the path of devotion to Lord Shri Krishna. Like that he writes the poem. Shri Krishna Karnamata, very world famous poetry. So this way, a worst sinner, if his mind can be changed, he will become one of the greatest devotees. That, that is how it works. That's why Shri Krishna has chosen the world champion of the sinners and said, if that person chooses to come into this path of self-knowledge, chet, chet means if, if is a, uh, there are two kinds of ifs, IFF, IFF if is there. It is used in mathematics. IFF if means if and only if, that is the meaning of it. So that is the meaning of chet, durlabha means it is very tough for such a transformation to happen in such a worst criminal. So, but in case the transformation happens, it can happen, possible, and as and when it happens, he is free, he is absolved of all the crimes and sins that were there, that were committed by him uh, uh, in this life and millions and millions of earlier births. Sarvam Jnanaplave Naiva Vrujinam Santarishyasi So that is what Sri Krishna told in Gita. Exactly the same thing is being said here. And a, a similar thing is said in Sutta Samhita also. Therefore, if there are crimes in life that were committed, so instead of uh, um, feeling guilty about them and getting worried, uh, worried means people are afraid. You know, in some of the Puranas, the, the Naraka Varnanam will be there. The description of the purgatory, Naraka. So, hell, they describe it. And uh, the, the, the description as you read it, uh, the body, I mean, you, you shake with fear. That kind of a description they give. So, for all kinds of sins, uh, all kinds of uh, persecutions in the hell are described. And when uh, some of these people, uh, they read these descriptions, they, uh, that fear uh, enters into the minds and they live in fear because they know they have committed these crimes. So, stealing other people's money, etc. So, so many kinds of uh, you know, like, um, crimes uh, are committed by people. They routinely commit these crimes. And later, the crimes get accumulated. They, they escape the local law. Local law is nothing. So, one can easily escape local law. Whereas, uh, there is a divine law that somehow nobody can escape it and they know it. And they read these descriptions. And then uh, they get frightened. They live in fear. So, uh, but then, so there is a, a hope. Namely, the Prajchitta Kanda is hopeless. Because, the Prajchitta's atonement karmas are so elaborate that nobody will be able to fulfill those Prajchitta's. So that is a, just a, 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 out of question. But if the person takes to the self-knowledge and pursues this knowledge seriously and gains the knowledge of the self, he is in one stroke freed from the entire burden of the papas. How? Then uh, it may appear from this description that the self-knowledge is a kind of escape. It is not escape. Self-knowledge is not that easy. One, can, one cannot choose, his, choose it as a means of escape. It is not possible. In fact, by the time you have that enthusiasm, the real enthusiasm, people, they are not keen about self-knowledge to the required extent. They just pursue it as a, uh, a, because it gives a sensation. Generally in life, uh, we should be able to distinguish between a sensation and the real thing. So, generally people cannot distinguish between the two because the distinction is very subtle. What you get as a sensation and what is the real thing, they are two different things. For example, we stand in a queue, I mean in, uh, in India, People stand in the queue, long queues, hours together they stand and have the darshan of Balaji, 
or uh, in the dieting. And uh, that gives a wonderful sensation. But uh, the inner transformation doesn't happen. Generally, in the context of Karmakanda, if you follow the, the rules and regulations of the rituals carefully, it does create a, a conduct in life. So it does regulate the conduct of life, how the person conducts himself in day-to-day -day activities. That is nicely regulated. So the rituals help to that extent. But if I ask the question, do they help in creating a character in the person's heart? The answer must be no. It is everybody's experience. Therefore, by carefully following the rules and regulations of a ritual, day after day, and following the life given to strict adherence to the customs and rituals. So that really regulates only the conduct. But can it create the inner character is a question uh, that, that, uh, that is open. We cannot definitely say it creates. It may, it may not. Then another one more question. Can it create that consciousness, that inner consciousness, God consciousness? The answer is an emphatic no. Because the karma kanda has its limits. So, therefore, if this person really, so what we get out of um, such a, in some situations, we get sensations. So, you have the sensation of performing an elaborate ritual. The bigger the ritual, it is a more fulfilling to the ego. Because ego wants challenges. Ego always wants challenges. And it wants to scale the peaks. Suppose you say, offer one flower, or even not a flower, not one flower, a petal. Patram Pushpam, like that Sri Krishna says. He doesn't say Pushpani. Bahuvachanam also he doesn't use. He just says Pushpam. One flower you offer. And uh, offer it with devotion, intense devotion. That is enough. The entire puja is now fulfilled. If you, if such a simple thing, if you present before the ego, the ego says, how can it be? What one flower? Silly. Just take one flower and put there. Now it is all over. Like that, ego doesn't like it. Ego wants uh, a challenge. And therefore, 108 flowers, minimum it wants. Or 1008, even better. Or Lakshapa, Lakshachana, even better. So for the ego, there must be a challenge. That's why in meditation, etc., in meditation you don't throw challenges at people, you know. If the challenges are thrown, then that is not meditation at all. In meditation, everything is very simple. Suppose I ask you to watch the breath. What is difficulty in it? It is very simple. Are what kind of meditation it is? Just sit and watch the breath. So then what? Then nothing. So if you approach it like that, then you miss the whole point. Because that is ego's approach. Ego wants challenges. Then only it gets fulfilled. So we should not go for ego's fulfillment. We should go for the real fulfillment. Therefore the sensations that we collect in life. So they are fulfillment for ego only. A kind of a religious ego or a spiritual ego they call. So, uh, I, I did this and therefore I get a sensation. So, we go on collecting sensations. We are accustomed to such sensations. I am not saying in every context it is a sensation, but I am saying that unless we pay attention, it ends up as a sensation, nothing more than that. The good feeling, which is good in itself. But uh, just accumulating sensations in the memory, so that doesn't serve any purpose. That inner transformation doesn't happen. In Vedanta, so people come to Vedanta as a one more sensation. So, uh, so we went to the ashram. So we went to uh, cruise for 10 days. 
It's a sensation. I haven't come back, I haven't come back from the cruise trip. So you remember it quite often. And whenever there is a discussion of cruise, then you say, I have been on that cruise for ten days. How was it? Yeah, wonderful. It's a sensation. At that time it was a sensation, and now it is a memory. And then, suppose uh, that ashram is there, they have a course. So did you attend? Uh, so I am thinking of doing that course. Yes, yes, I have already done that course. How was it? Yeah, wonderful. The kitchen is good, and they, good, they do good food and all that. And then, uh, uh, so Mahatma, Mahatma is very nice. So uh, it, is a, it is a pleasure to listen to the Mahatma, and it is a very nice, his company is also very nice. And then we had a, a very good company, because so many other friends have come, and we had a very nice time. So one week. And so it is a wonderful sensation. And so it adds to the list of sensations that we have. It doesn't serve any purpose. So, Vedanta is not that easy, because the mind has this knack that it converts everything into a sensation, and every effort is ultimately is fulfilling of ego only. Therefore, this is a kind of Vedantic ego. So, I have done this much courses, this many courses, that many courses, a kind of professionalism in that. And uh, so, a kind of ego. Did you, did you study these Upanishads, etc.? No, no, I never said, I heard about them, I never said, where we have studied all the Upanishads. A sensation. Doesn't work like that. That's why Jnanam is not an escape for anybody. It's not an escape from all kinds of crimes. It is a, an uphill task. But, with a proper uh, shift of focus, it is doable, and uh, as you make progress in the right direction, it is easy also. Provided you have to make progress, it is like uh, climbing the mountain. It is easy or difficult. You sit at the base and contemplate upon the climbing uh, continuously, contemplate day after day after day, so it is difficult. It looks formidable. But you jump into the fray, forget about uh, all kinds of imagined obstacles, jump into the fray and start climbing. Initially, it is a really tough to make progress. But having made some progress, the further progress becomes easier and easier and easier. And as you approach the summit, it looks reachable and ultimately you reach it. Therefore, so Vedanta, study of as Vedanta is not an escape from Karmakanda. Karmakanda is very tough and so Vedanta provides an ultimate easier escape. It's not like that. In fact, Karmakanda is uh, physical and very gross and external. Whereas, uh, knowledge is not physical. It is uh, inner and it is very intrinsic and very subtle. And therefore, it is that much more difficult. But, in case you manage to gain that eagerness and earnestness towards the knowledge, and then uh, automatically you persevere with it and acquire all the qualifications required, like Viveka, Vairagya, etc., a list of qualifications are presented for the convenience of the seekers. And so, we acquire all those qualifications one after another. Most of them are interrelated. You have one, you have a few others automatically. So, as you do that and persevere with the sadhana, you will accomplish it. It is meant for this life, no one here. Vedanta is not a, rel a post mortem religion. It is no one here. That is how it is presented. That is the purpose. People conveniently postpone it. So, Atma Jnana, yeah, it will happen after 100 births, it is not easy. Like that, they postpone it. But it is not meant for that. So, it is something which one can accomplish, no one here. Suppose you have accomplished it, even a glimpse of it, some internal awareness, an element of internal awareness, and uh, you gain some space, that inner space, just a little. That itself is so fulfilling, that life becomes very light and easy. The 
So we are living like heavy land and ships, heavy, heavily burdened with all kinds of things. So life becomes easier and easier as we pursue this knowledge. So that is the meaning of saying, it is the price chitta for all papas. Papa is the burden that we carry, the burden of memories and the burden of future fears, that is the papa. And all those papas, so and in fact entire karma phala is just negated and destroyed in one stroke because karma phala doesn't attach itself to the atma. Atma transcends the, the sphere of karmas and karma phala. Karmas are in prakruti, that is the body mind. And karma phala is also in prakruti, that is the body mind. Atma transcends the body mind, it is the watcher, it is not the doer. In today's meditation, I did not introduce this thing. Namely, I am is the being shining as the knowing, that is what I am is. But in I amness, there is no doing. The being, shining as the knowing, has no doing at all in it. All doing is at a lower level. In the being, there is no doing. So, unfortunately, we confuse that being is same as doing. That is our problem. We get confused. So, people ask, so what should we do now? Why should you do anything? Why should you? You know yourself as the being, shining as the knowing, in which there is no doing at all. That is what Atma is. Atma is Akarta and Abhokta. It is the being, shining as the knowing, with no doing at all. Know your true nature. Then, as you abide as the Satchid Atma, actions happen. You don't do actions. Actions happen. And uh, they happen. Spontaneously they happen. Allow them to happen. Need not stop actions happening. You need not, you need not give a, you need not uh, become the karta bhokta. Just allow the actions happen. Be the watcher. Be the witnessing presence. Don't be the doer. Because you are not uh, intrinsically the doer. You are the doer only by ignorance. Therefore, by knowledge, when the doership and enjoyership is imposed, self-imposed status, I am the doer, I am the enjoyer. By ignorance, I take myself to be the doer-enjoyer. So when that imposed status itself is rejected, then along with the status of doer and enjoyer, all the karmas that are accumulating and have accumulated around the doer-enjoyer, that is the ego. Doer enjoyer is the ego. All the karmas that accumulated around the doer enjoyer, so all of them will be destroyed in one stroke as the ego is destroyed. This is how all the papas and punyas, punyas also will go away. You, you have to keep that in mind. Only papas will go away, you should not think. Papa, punya, everything will be gone. You see, just I will give one example and conclude that verse. In Hrishikesh, some of the sadhus, they open a bank account. Sometimes opening a bank account becomes very essential in modern lifestyles. So we are living in a modern society, you need to have a bank account. Without bank account, things won't happen. So some of the important things also need a bank account. So we open a bank account. They ask, what is the, who is the nominee? We leave it a blank. Some of the banks do not open accounts without nominee. Therefore, we don't go to those banks. There are some banks which allow the account without nominee. And also in India, if there is a rule, we can always bypass the rule. There are bypass roads, you know. All bypass roads will be there. Here also many bypass roads will be there. Suppose 90 is there. 90 is a highway. Suddenly you see 290. The 290 is a bypass road. It is not a, a just bypass road. It bypasses a city. The buffalo is bypassed. It is called 290. So like that bypass road. 
Similarly, you should give an amini, that is the rule. We always have a bypass. <laughs> so we bypass it. In India, we are experts in bypassing the rules. In India, the rule is observed more in its breach. That is, that, is, that is how it is. We don't care for all these laws and all that. Man-made laws, who cares? We, we are interested only in divine laws. We are very spiritual society and religious society. These man-made laws and all that. That is how the society is. So, you have, you have to see it to believe it. Suppose you are driving a, there is a two, two-way expressway. That means ongoing traffic has separate lanes and uh, upcoming traffic have separate lanes. And uh, there is a divider between the two. So you are going <laughs> in your path. Then a huge lorry fellow is coming ahead of you on your side. First from the distance uh, it looks as if this fellow is on the other side. Because the divider is there, you know, maybe he is on the other side. But as you come nearer and nearer, you get a doubt. Is he on this side? You get a doubt. Then you go, it is all happens in a few seconds. Then you go a little nearer. Yes, he is coming in this lane. Now what to do? So start breaking it. And then uh, he also noticed you. So you give way to him. Go to the second lane. Let him pass. You know why he is coming this way? Because he has to take a U-turn. Then he will be on that land. But U-turn means a U-turn is not near. You have to go three miles up to take a U-turn. And so he doesn't want to go to three miles up to take a U-turn. Why should I go? I have to go this side. Why should I go that side? <laughs> Suppose you stop him and ask, why are you coming this way? Go that way. He said, no, I won't go that way. I have to go to this place. Why should I go that way? I won't go that way. Then what are you going to do? I will go this way. And whenever I get a chance, I will go to the other side. That is the philosophy. Really. This is how they do. They never go even hundred yards to take a U-turn in the wrong direction. We are very focused people. <laughs> in the right direction only. This U-turns, I have, I have to go west. Why should I go to east? I will go west only. No, no, this is wrong side. Okay, I will shift to the other side. I too know that this is wrong side. You don't tell me. I know it. I will shift. Now, how, how shall I shift? There is a divider. How shall I shift now? Keep quiet and give way. I will shift when the place comes. So he will shift. Down the road, after two miles, there is a break in the divider. He will go to the other side. He is not interested in this side. We function on this basis. Therefore, so these sadhus, they manage to open an account without the nominee. I have an account like that. No nominee. I have an account. Then, uh, now, suppose the sadhu dies. What will happen to the money in that account? Some money will be there. Sometimes it is small money. Sometimes it will be big also. We don't know. Now what will happen to that? When the person dies, it will go to government. And uh, the Uttaranchal government gets millions of rupees every year like this. Whenever a sadhu dies, government coffers get some money. They just get that money. Because nobody claims that account. So similarly, a jnani is a punya papa. They, they do not bother the jnani anymore. He is absolved of all the punya papa. All this punya papa, what will happen to them? They go into the hole. They just disappear into the space. That means, because the ego which attracts the punya papa is not there. You see, what is jnana, shall I tell you? What is self-knowledge? Dissolution of the ego is the self-knowledge. That is the self-knowledge. There is no other self-knowledge. Ego is a reflex of identification with the body-mind. Body is an entity. Mind is a function. So this body and mind, they are working in tandem. Life is reflecting and they are working in tandem. And now there is an identification out of which an ego, an ego means an isolated entity, 
an isolated mental entity, cognitive entity. It is separate from the whole. How did it arise? The body is not separate from the whole. How did this ego come as to separate from the whole? Entirely by ignorance, by mistake, by an assumption. So that is the ego. And that ego is the doer enjoyer. It attracts all the results of actions towards itself. So, that ego, you neutralize it. How to neutralize? You find out what are the focal points of ego and negate them. That is how you neutralize the ego. By the time you neutralize the ego, you are a liberated person and all the punya, papa, all karmas are gone. For example, ego is always an enjoyer. Therefore, if you neutralize the enjoyership, then ego becomes weak. This is what Krishna says, karmanye vadhikaraste ma phaleshu kadachina. Adhikara is connection. Adhikaraha phala sambandhaha. That is the definition. Sambandha, connection. Dear sir, are you going to undertake an action? Yes. Already you have connected in your mind yourself with the result? Yes. Because that is what an enjoyer is. I am an enjoyer. Who is an enjoyer? Enjoyer is the one who gets connected with the result. Phala bhokta, you know. The enjoyer of the result. So, uh, result is not in the present. This the only action is in the present. Result is always in the future. It is like that always it is in the future. Whatever is in the present is not result. It is part and parcel of the action only. Whatever is now is action. Whatever is in the future, whatever will come in the future is result. Now you tell me, you, you apply your mind and tell me, as a pragmatic person, what should you do? Should you get connected with what is now or should you get connected with what will come later? You can get connected with only one thing at a time. The focus can be on only one thing. Now you think pragmatically and tell me which is the right thing to do? Should I get connected with what is now or should I get connected with what will come later? That is what Krishna is saying. Karmanya vadhikaraste. Karma is action. And it is now. So be attached to that. Be associated with it. Put your focus on it. Be in it. And learn to enjoy it. Enjoy the karma. No, no, I want to enjoy the karma phala. Come on. Karma phala is not here. Here is karma. How, how can you enjoy karma phala? When karma is before you, either you can enjoy karma or you can avoid enjoyment. You can be without enjoyment. How can you enjoy karma phala? Karma phala will come later. So, we are talking of now. We are not talking of the future. This is not astrology. So, we are talking of the now. In the now, what is the karma? So, if, if the now has karma, and I am contemplating on karma phala, getting connected to the karma phala cognitively, so I am transporting myself from the real present to the imagined future. How can you do that? Mind can do anything. Because mind is ignorant, stupid and stubborn. It can do anything. It can transport us into the future. That is how we live. When 2007 was there, we were living in 2008. Now 2008 has come. So now also at least we should live in 2008? No. Now we choose to live in 2009. What will happen in 2009? I am not talking of chronological time. I am talking of psychological time. Chronological time is what? A calendar. Calendar is the chronological time. Psychological time means I am concerned about 2009. I am worried. I have fears. I anticipate. I expect. That is all psychological time. So mind transports the person from the present to the future in the form of enjoyership. Therefore, break it. 
break that mental habit. Learn to enjoy the karma. Don't wait to enjoy the karma phala. Karma phala will come. And when it comes, you will know it. And you will enjoy it also. Presently, you work, you enjoy the karma. Don't deny yourself the enjoyment of karma in the name of karma phala. Don't do that mistake. Suppose you follow the advice of Krishna. Then what happens? The karma becomes a selfless action. Because you are not seeking the karma phala now. It becomes a selfless action, you know. And it becomes an enjoyable action. And you are in the present. And you are where? You go as the enjoyer is neutralized. One of the important focal points of the ego is enjoyership. That is neutralized. As the ego enjoyership is neutralized, ego is gone. Most of it is gone. Like this, you have to find out the focal points of ego. Fear is a focal point of ego. Enjoyership, doership. Then, uh, uh, so, hurts, guilts, these are all the focal points of desires, fears. They are the focal points of the ego. And uh, you recognize them and reject them. Once the ego is neutralized, therefore this limited being identified with the body-mind is neutralized. It is not real. That's why it gets neutralized. Then uh, the being, unlimited, it blossoms. That internal awareness, unlimited, it blossoms. That is self-knowledge. In that self-knowledge, you are the being, shining as the knowing, in which there is no doing. And hence, your connection with all karma phalas, punya papa, is over. This is how the papas and punyas are absolved for a jnani. This is how the jnana is presented as the greatest atonement. So, atone for, for the past mistakes through knowledge and be liberated. Next verse. Drug drushyo dvaupadarthaustaha parasparavilakshanau paravilakshanau drug brahma drushyam mayasyat Vedanta Dindi Mahan. So in this text, Vedanta Dindima, each verse is a topic by itself. It is a, the Vedanta Dindima is a kind of a miscellany, you know, miscellany, a collection of miscellaneous items. Vedanta Dindima is like that. So each time you beat the drum and proclaim. Once the proclamation is over, the topic is over. Then one more time you beat the drum and again proclaim. The topic is, uh, it doesn't mean the topic is entirely new. The topic is uh, a different point. Within the overall topic of self-knowledge, you, you make a different point. Therefore, each verse is very unique. It is like a, a, a basket of different fruits. They do that, you know. They make a basket in which all kinds of fruits are, they find representation. There, is, there are a few grapes, there is an orange, there is a pear, there is a peach, so there is a mango, everything is there. Beyond the dinema is like that. You can choose any one method. That is the beauty of this text. So, you see, we are now coming to a very different topic. This is, topic is called, this punya papa, that thing is over now. The topic now is uh, drug drushya viveka. That is the topic. In fact, here uh, there is only one verse about that topic. In fact, Shankaracharya has made a book on that topic. It is called drug drushya viveka. It has uh, from 40, 50, or 50, 60 verses. And uh, the entire essence of Drugdrushya Viveka is collected in the class. You see, there, there is Vichara, 
in Vedanta, what we do is vichara, inquiry. We inquire. Suppose you go to a, a ritual, a karmakanda situation. What, what the people will be doing? Will they be doing vichara? No, they will not be doing vichara. In fact, nobody has time for vichara. If you go there and ask, come on, all of the people, let us do vichara, they will physically throw you out from there. Because the vichara comes in the way, it is an obstacle there. And nobody has that inner freedom or inner space for vichara. Because they have to do so many things. Suppose you are, you are doing Vishnu Sahasranama Puja. Now the Sahasranama Puja is very elaborate. It will take entire morning. And after Puja is over, you have to do Harati and Anaga, Mantra Pashpa, Naivedya, so many things are there. Then the guests have to be fed, so many arrangements have to be made. And if, I, if you put me there and take one name on the start to Vichara, the Vishwam, Vishnuha, two names are enough. The entire morning we can do Vichara. It will not be conducive for the karma situation. Whereas in the context of Vedanta, it is not any doing here. There is no doing here. It is all uh, contemplating and inquiring. We inquire. So, the inquiry called vichara, that is the name, it is twofold. Karya karana vichara, drug drushya vichara. The beauty of such texts is, a given topic, you can bring it in its essence, in a given context. The entire topic is brought out. The verse is like that. Therefore, it is very useful for the students, because they get exposed to the variety of topics interrelated, but very useful. Anyway, Karya Karana Vichara versus Drugdrushya Vichara. Now, you see, we are talking of the Jagat. There is the universe before us. It is the Karya. What is its cause? That is one, one, one kind of Vichara. Then uh, we ask a question. Is it a Karya? Karya means a thing which is. Therefore, the Jagat, is it a thing which is? Or is it a thing which appears? There is a big difference. You go to the movie, there are things on the screen. Now those things on the screen, so are they things which are? Or are they things which appear? They are the things which appear. So they are not the things which are. Just one thing I will say and I will conclude the class. Suppose on the movie screen, you see an apple or a bunch of apples. Then uh, start vichara. The apples are karya, effect, product, and what is the cause of these apples? Then you say, these apples have their cause in the uh, apple orchids of Florida. If you say that, that is called karana karya vichara. This is the cause and this is the effect caused by that cause. That kind of a vichara, is it valid there? It is not valid. Because uh, the apples that you see on the screen, they are not apples. It is an appearance of apples. What a Florida orchid and all that. That has nothing to do with what you see on the screen. They are not real apples. They are appearance of an apple. Therefore, the Karana Karya Vichara falls flat. It is not applicable there. It is a Drug Drushya Vichara. It is a Drushya. What is seen? What is appearing? Therefore, the entire inquiry, it goes in a different direction. We will see it tomorrow. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamagachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnamayavavashyate Om Shanti 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 Harihi Om Shri Guru Bhyavanamaha Harihi Om Tatsatakshita Shnartha Namaste